Hello, my name is Connie Johnson. I'm a physical therapist with Fairfax County Public Schools, and I'm here today with one of my colleagues. Todd Utter, adaptive physical education teacher at, uh, and for Fairfax County at Westfield High School. Um, we've worked together for quite a lot of years, um, and we share a lot of ideas and activities because we all have the same intention. Um, we want um, youth to have more skills, um, both what they're acquiring in school and then for when they exit school. So I called Pat a few weeks ago and I said, hey, there's this special ed conference coming up. Do you want to join and present? And of course I said, sure, what are we going to do? We're going to do a lot of the things we've incorporated in class and uh, that's what we've decided to do. Um, and I was like, Todd, well, what about those buckets? And so, yeah, he had a few buckets. He's got them in the back of his room. Um, we're recording this, of course, uh, in schools and building in person, so we can't be together. And normally we would be working together with students, but if we did that, we'd have to be masked up and all that. So we got some slides for you, and we've got some fun and games, and I think I'm ready. How about you? I, I'm, I'm ready to go. I got a couple things over here that I'm going to give uh, as we get going, uh, talking about different things to do at home. Uh, I grabbed a couple of th extra things that they can use for ideas. Awesome. All right. So let me share the slides. All right. So we're titling this presentation, Ready for Work, Four Activities to Practice at Home. And four is kind of kitschy and arbitrary because honestly, between Mr. Utter and I, we could keep you guys busy probably all day long. Um, but this is going to be some of the key things that we think are necessary. Yeah, and when we start talking about this uh, way back, like she said, I think it's been over 10 years ago, we started talking about things that they, pe people need to do in order to work and be healthy. And we started incorporating a lot of fitness things and applying it to work-related skills. We noticed too that a lot of um, parents who started incorporating these activities would come to IEP meetings and, you know, they would tell Todd that, you know, their student suddenly or their child could suddenly carry grocery bags and they couldn't carry them before. And so we knew that when we were planning these activities that we were really on to something because they not only were helpful for learning skills in school, but youth could actually carry these things over at home. And correctly. And that's really important because we want them to be strong in their bodies when they do these things. Um, some of the backstory is that um, we do know that youth with um, youth in general don't get enough physical activity um, and that only 19% of youth age 11 to 17 without a disability get the physical activity they need for their health. Um, and we know that those numbers are, can be worse for um, people with disabilities because they have more barriers than others do. And we know that this puts them at risk for long-term um, disease. But we really want them to have the foundational health so that they can be physically active and have the endurance and the body strength to get up off the floor, to squat, to pick things up. So the research also tells us that having expectation is a really big thing. It's actually a facilitator to success later in getting a job is actually having that expectation that youth are going to do some of these kinds of tasks. So we put expectation at the bottom of our pyramid. Um, there's a lot more information on this from the National Technical Assistance Center on Transition, um, which um, describes it as an outcome of post-school success. We're going to build physical activity on top of that and the physical activity that they get not only um, during their school day, but what else they can get outside of school. Um, another post-secondary indicator of success is completion of chores or some care or activities of daily living. It's really all the same thing, um, but those are those tasks that you do every day um, to, um, to take care of things, and it is considered an indicator of post-secondary success, your ability to complete those tasks. 
So we're going to start with meeting the physical activity guidelines. Um, these are put out um, by through the, the 2018 physical activity guidelines, and they really say that youth need to get an hour of exercise per day um, and that they need to include muscle strengthening and bone strengthening activities. Um, the, we feel like this is really important, not only for their foundational health, but so they have the endurance, the strength, and the mobility um, to um, have the foundational abilities they need for their skills. So what are some of the ways that we can meet those physical activity guidelines? Um, they can meet it through leisure activity, recreation activity, community activity, and sport. And we have a picture here of, fris of Frisbee on here. That I think I that's where... Yeah, that's where we started talking about family things that we can do as a leisure or recreation. And uh, we're talking about Burke Lake and some of the other parks in Fairfax County that parents can take their students, and, or not students, but children, child, kids, uh, mm -hmm. and do Frisbee young golf, people. young people, and go Frisbee golf and, and uh, get an exercise walk in the park and throw Frisbee. And it could be for anybody. Uh, so finding those recreation things was important. We're really fortunate in Fairfax County. We have um, a very wide network of parks. Um, there's recreational activities and there's also activities that are available through Special Olympics and then other programs. But how do you actually like incorporate this into your, your day or what, what are the different ways that you can practice? Um, one of the things that Tony talked a lot about is um, Having, not only having the expectation that um, youth are gonna do some of these skills, but also looking at how they're doing them um, and making sure that those things are built into the routine. So if you're coming home from the grocery store and you hand the student um, a box of cereal, a bag with two boxes of cereal in it, that's different than giving them a gallon of milk. And so if we have that expectation that, that they're gonna help you with the heavier items, um, and that they're doing it safely, um, that that's really, that's really important. I think safely is uh, such an important concept. And I think that's one of the things that I've learned uh, teaching our kids here. Uh, there's so many ways that we can go about and say, do this activity. But if they're doing it incorrectly, whether it's a lift off the ground or carrying, um, they're gonna end up with some injuries. And later on, you know, if, you know Connie, when we research this, uh, and you showed me some of that research from uh, the nationals, how job-related injuries are, are increased dramatically because of lower back injuries from lifting and carrying and not doing it correctly. So when we practice our skills, one of the things I do in class is we make sure we're doing it correctly first before we start getting into lifting heavy items. Yeah, and I care about them doing it correctly because I have a lot of students, for example, if I ask them to pick up something off the floor, they'll hinge and bend only at their hip. But if they actually bend their knees and their hips, then I know that they're using the strength of their whole body to do the task and not just strength that's in their low back. Um, and many times as adults, you and I don't may not always lift something correctly or in, in the way that uses the strength that we have in our own bodies. And so we just wanna make sure that we're translating that information to, um, to the youth that we work with. So how do we link this physical, these physical activity um, to health and to work tasks? So there is research that actually says that your um, health and longevity is linked to how you get up off the floor and to your grip strength. Um, now these studies are in older adults, but they do translate to other populations, including ourselves as um, adults and caregivers. And so um, anything we can do to encourage um, these activities will help our students with long-term health. Um, in terms of work tasks, we want our kids to be able to get up and down off the floor because they might have to work with doing activities at their waist height or at um, below their waist. Um, in terms of squatting, they might need that position for the same reason. Um, and they also need to have the mobility of their hips, knees, and ankles to do some of these work tasks. 
Um, gripping is a key skill that is important. And some of our youth don't grab things because uh, for a variety of reasons, it can be muscle strength, it can be muscle ability, it can also be the connection between how you're thinking about doing the task and your ability to do the task. But we have lots of different ways to try to help um, our students um, do more of these gripping kinds of skills that'll translate to work. Um, and then I'm gonna hand the farmer's carry over to you because um, you, you've been doing a lot of work with this one. Well, yeah, the farmer's carry is something that I think that we do and we don't even think about, uh, you know, whether we go to the grocery store and we gotta carry two bags at the same time one in each hand, or we're carrying two gallons of milk. Uh, but, but these, uh, the farmer carry does work your forearm strength, which in, is basically still working on your grip strength. And I think that the farmer's carry is such an important um, practice that uh, it would actually help the students if they're able to do it. So one of the things that farmer's carry does, uh, it, it relates, you know, it follows our, our list of relating to job related skills, whether it's carrying two paint buckets, whether it's carrying a pail of, a, uh, of uh, paint or water, uh, washing the cars, having two pails. But I think it relates to a lot of different job or vocational skills and it deals with strength and your ability to do, do it for a long period of time or a longer period of time. So not necessarily carrying hay bales, one in each arm, but there are things that you probably can think about or you have the strength or have to have the strength carrying with two hands and walking for a length of time, whether it's groceries or other things like that. I love the farmer's carry too, because you have to have a lot of um, body strength and balance in order to carry something with two hands and walk. But one of the interesting things is that for some of our students, when they have a little bit of weight in their hands, it puts a little bit more pressure on their joints, which gives their joints more information about where their body is in space. And so sometimes having our students carry some of these um, light to medium weight items can actually make their balance better. Hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I actually didn't think about the balance part, but you're 100% right. That's a beautiful thing about the collaboration because he's thinking about it one way and I'm thinking about it another way and together um, we're coming up with some cool ideas. So we're going to take you through practice of four different um, ideas. Um, and the first one is getting up and down off the floor. And we already spoke about how this is an indicator of future health and that it's a functional skill. Um, our goal is for people to get up and do it hands free without using their hands to push up like this young lady is. But we all start wherever we're comfortable, right? So there's a lot of different ways to practice this skill. You might have someone practice getting up off of the floor at first using a chair. You might have them do it multiple times. You might have one leg up, one leg down, or use your knees and hands. So we're gonna demo these things for you. And Connie, one of the things that we did too is uh... We even did it as uh, levels, one knee or two knees down to stand, and then we worked our way down to sitting. All right, I think I've stopped my screen share here. I think we're good. Do you want me to practice demo that one, or did you want to do that one? Go ahead, why don't you head, go ahead and do that. All right, I'm gonna adjust my screen here. So, um, the goal is to come down on the ground. And typically what I'll do is I'll just ask the student to stand up however they're gonna stand up. So maybe it's coming on one knee, maybe it's coming one foot first, but maybe you do that three times in a row. And I'll just have students practice it just for repetition. I know that this is done as a warm up in a lot of um, Todd's classes where they just practice getting up and down. So I can get it up with two knees. I might push up with my hands to stand up. One of the things you're doing, Connie, that uh, I think when you slow down the skill itself, you, when you break it down, we've done it in classes. When you first went crisscross, you then take one leg and you put legs to the side. So you get into a side sit almost. Yeah, you went to a side sit before you went to get up. So when the parents, when you're looking uh, for this at home, one of the things we do at school is we will break it down. So as Connie goes to stand up, she goes up, 
to her knees. One foot, her eyes are going to be up as she goes to stand up. Good posture. She's standing up. But then what Connie and I would do is we'd go, we'd start breaking it down. Okay, what's first? We'll go two knees. And then we'll go from two knees. Okay, stand up. And then we will go even to one knee. I've also seen students do it like this, actually. I've seen them rock back on their feet and stand up. Uh, and that, that's not wrong, um, but it's just another way. And I don't even feel like we're teaching them that they have to do it an exact certain way, but let's give them multiple ways to do it so that they're um, using their body. And then I have a chair that if I needed help, I could do it with that one. Especially helps with balance. Going to reshare the screen here. Takes a minute to share here. Squatting. So yeah. squatting is really important um, for having full body and flexibility and strength. If you look at these two who are squatting, they have to have a lot of bending in their hips, their knees, and their ankles. If you have good technique, and it can really help your body to be stronger and to prevent injury. But we're really structured in how we ask our students to squat. Um, and there's a few of the key cues that we use. Um, eyes up, chest up, your butt back and down. And um, when you use the word, uh, I don't know if I taught, I don't know if I should have put the word butt in a professional presentation, but I'll tell you, um, it is descriptive, so that helps. Um, yeah. And then I having just say hips down. <laughs> hips down, yeah. Um, but practicing for multiple repetitions. Um, and if they can't squat, maybe we practice sit to stand from a chair. Maybe we practice it to stand from a really high chair, or maybe we um, have them work down to lower surfaces. Right. Do, yeah, you so, to, do you want me unshare or do you want me to talk through the slides? Uh, it's up to you. I can, this is fine. I, I am good. Uh, you know, do you want me to present the squat with the different items that I have? I'm thinking, let's just go through these slides and then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then farmers carry. Um, really important. We want students to be able to manage their own personal items in school. We want them to be able to carry their backpack, to carry items in their hands. That's one way that they can start working on that skill is just by carrying their personal items. Um, but we're doing it because we're looking at, yes, grip strength, arm strength, core and trunk strength. It's a whole body activity. Um, and in most every single job, there is some element of carrying items. Um, if you are, if you use a wheelchair for your mobility, you're still going to have to carry items and figure out how to move items around. And you might put them on your lap, but you're still going to have to be able to handle items with your hands. Um, how do we practice it? We might talk about um, contracting your trunk muscles, suck in your stomach, shrug your shoulders, stand tall, have them grip an object holding it steady. And again, this is one to incorporate into everyday tasks using multiple repetitions and different weights and grips. And we're going to demonstrate all those um, in a minute. And then grip strength. Um, again, this is something that is linked to longevity, but it really is needed for work and functional skills. Um, Todd's got some very interesting ways that he has students practice it in, um, in PE class. At home, you can also um, do a lot of these activities. Wrist curls, wringing towels, carrying items, a tennis ball or a racquetball squeeze. And we like students to use um, not just one hand, but both hands. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay. Do you want to do the squat first? I can do the squat. Yeah, I'll do the squat. So like Ms. Johnson had said, one of the things that I would most likely try to do in the beginning is I would make sure I would either go from the chair, sitting down. I actually will have my kids' eyes up, making sure the chair is not going to move. And I'm just going to go to a sit so they go down and then the eyes up, stand. 
And I try to make sure to, that the functional movement is good because the thing we're trying to do is we do not want them bending over three legs and pulling it back and hurting themselves. So we'll start with this. So obviously anything you pick up off the ground, and I always have this sitting around as, you know, partner carries, you find this, you know, whether it's plywood or- So that came, uh, you copied that off of, a, there was a cardboard box um, of items that got delivered to the school. And on the side of the box, it said team lift. And so he goes after the custodians and he's cutting out these beautiful visuals and he can use that for instruction for, to tell, teach our students how to lift two items together. That's right. It, and it's, they put that down as a warning above it too. Please make sure. So one of the things that obviously is very important, but you know, who carries box, whether, what, whatever size the box is, and I'm going to go, it might be better counting from the side or yep, should I? That's good. Side is good. Okay. I'm going to have my shoulder width apart, eyes up. I'm going to bend so my hips come down my knees. My hips stay straight. I'm up. I, I call this frog position and then back up. Okay. Because we want our kids to make sure when we're bending down for items that are could be heavy, that we're bending down the correct way. So we're bending down the right way. Knees come out. Right now he's straight. keeping his eyes up and his chest up. Can you do that one more time? I got a so, couple. I, I have a crate too that we use in school. Milk crate. Milk crate. So I'm going to be going. Which way should I turn? Sideways or? Sideways forward? is good. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go down in frog position here. Eyes up. Hips here. Lined up. Toes forward and up. So by keeping his eyes up. He's keeping his chest up and his spine is really straight. So he's putting his back in a really strong position that he can use his leg muscles. But I find with a lot of our students, the eyes go down and the chest goes down because they've just never been taught to keep their eyes up. We use this pail too. And I remember we would fill it with water and have kids. Yes, there. yes. Before COVID. Water, you know, to make sure that, you know, so they go down. And of course, and back up. It's a little bit different when you add water in here to this splashes around yeah, that's a little. Yeah, balance. And so every item he has needs a different grip on the item. So the way he held the milk crate, the way he held the bucket, the way um, he held the box. So I he's see. working with all of these squatting. If he walks carrying that item, he's using a different grip with his hands on each item, which is great for our students. Um, do you have a little grippy thing? I did. Are we going to go into grip? I thought we were just doing squats. No, we're going to do all of them. Okay. We'll, all the so we'll, go into, we'll go into grip. So one of the first things that I, 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 first of all, coordination for this is really good too, is going, basically I put the tape on it so you can see. Does that help? Yeah, um, the tape that's perfect. And then I'll change direction. So it changes. And I, I find that a lot of kids have a hard time going in reverse. But that's all helped your forearm strength. In addition, I think this is what you were talking about, Connie. I love strength. this thing. I don't know where yes. you got that idea from. That is yeah. awesome. String with a little weight and you don't have yeah. to have much. But this is a great forearm strength. You work on bringing it up and slowly bringing it back down. And you could. You can tie a milk with water, a milk jug with water in it. So the dollar store sells like little baskets. You could put a soup can, a couple soup cans in a basket, and he's using PVC pipe. Um, that's what he's holding on to, and a, a piece of PVC pipe is a great um, tool to practice these kind of things. Yeah, we have. All right. So the other thing was. Uh, oh. We want to show the dumbbell the farmers carry. Yep. So the farmers carry is just basically walking, making sure the same thing though as I would make sure your alignment is correct when you do it. Uh, all they're doing is carrying it. Now, as it gets a little easier, don't necessarily have to have weight with it. You can actually change how you hold it. So having you hold it changes the weight because it now incorporates a lot of other muscles when you're doing it. So that's one thing. Carrying pails of water, or I fill it up with water or bean bags. 
to make it a little heavier. This is a farmer's carry. And, and um, some people will grip even just the uh, regular weights, dumbbell, uh, not dumbbells, but plates. Yep. Carry them with their, and they'll walk down the hall with them. Um, all ways to strengthen those forearms that you've related to me. And actually, I've read that research that you sent me on the longevity. And I'm assuming because of all the things we have to hold up and we don't lose balance and you know, the, these things uh, help us out. Can you so squat down, Todd? Can you squat down? Can't see your face. There you go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, goodness. Sorry. All right. I think we've got through all of our um, ideas for working on activities at home. Yeah. Um, I hope this is helpful. I hope that this gives you ideas of things that, that if you have one of these things that your child is working on at home, and you want an idea of how to practice it that you've picked up one or two ways that you could incorporate into your into their day. Now, maybe you decide to choose the bucket idea um, and maybe you have that um, one activity that they're going to do every day at a certain time, like when they get off the bus and they come home or before dinner or um, before they go to bed. That's one way to build an activity into a routine. Um, and our students do tend to like routines, and it helps us also to remember to do it with them. Hey, one thing, Connie, I thought maybe we could mention too with this is, uh, you know, you you always do a good job at trying to assimilate or because these are fitness things that we're having them do, how they use them in the vocational skills. Like we did talk about the grip and carrying things. Yeah, yeah. But you the bending and, and and things. You used to talk about how. You know, some of the kids that go work at grocery stores and, and some of the other, you know, applying all these skills and how important this fitness part is for their vocation. Yeah. And so our students um, at um, Westfield High School go out into the community and do jobs. Um, some of them are in restaurants. They might be working in a hotel. Um, they might be working. Um, I've had uh, students go to a local church. Um, and some of the tasks that they're doing involve bending, lifting, and moving items. So um, in a hotel, they might have to put uh, sheets into a bin. And so they have to pick up the sheets off the ground and they have to place them in the bin. They have to push the bin down the hallway. Um, they might have to carry stacks of towels or um, cleaning supplies in both hands. They might have um, some kind of a cleaner in one hand and some kind of a tool in the other. And so what they're doing in um, PE and what we're encouraging them to do at home is going to also help them to have more proficiency when they go to these job sites and are asked to do some of these um, some of these tasks. Yeah, these functional fitness things have, have been, uh, especially for high school kids that we're starting with that I have here, you know, seeing where they end up, like, where do we want to see them? And we want to make sure we can reach that goal by the time they leave or achieve as best we can. And uh, for them to be fit and being able to do the workload uh, is very important when they leave Westfield, uh, which we didn't get into cardio stuff. But I'm sure, you know, at one point we're going to have to, you know, once that functional fitness, we know how important just the walking is and being able to walk and sustain work. Being able to work eight hours a day is uh, important. Yeah, and that was one reason why we talked about the physical activity guidelines in the beginning. So that's um, saying we need to do an hour a day. And I think as a, as a working adult and as a parent, it's hard for me to get an hour of exercise in um, some days. But it's really important for me to take that extra walk after I'm out of work or to go for a walk with somebody else to get in a little bit of extra cardio if I didn't happen to get it during the day. Um, that can be hard for our students, but um, going on a family walk, stretch, structuring in um, any kind of sporting activities, um, there's lots of different ways that um, that, that can be built into um, a child's routine. Wow. Great idea. Connie, I appreciate you inviting me to doing this uh, in service and uh, I hope uh, they get people get something out of it, and if, if they have any questions, they reach out to you or me. And uh, yeah, thank you help. so much for your time, and um, I uh, thank you for being flexible with us as we flip back and forth within um, between our screens to share our slides. We uh, we're, we're managing a few things here, uh, separate rooms and distancing and all that. So anyway, take care and have a great day. Bye bye. Bye.